Hi there, I'm Clueless Mike and you're watching Modelling for Advantage. Right you zogging gits, let's see what Da Kaiser, or Da Mrs Kaiser more accurately, has sent us to open this week. We's got the bestest green battle force box, Combat Patrol, Da Orcs! Okay, let's get this bad boy open. Sorry, I can't do the accent for longer than about 20 seconds, else I will lose the inability to talk. Or lose the ability to talk. I've already got the inability, it seems. So, this is the latest Combat Patrol for Orcs. Now, one of the best things about this box is all but one of the models inside are brand new. So, never been released before, not available anywhere else either, which is one of the selling points they seem to like doing nowadays. Um, We'll start off with the ubiquitous instruction booklet. Excellent as ever, I've said about these many times before. They, they're the best you can get, really. All colour-coded, all really nicely broken down, show you your options, show you what to glue, what not to glue if you want moving parts. Really good. Um, invaluable, really, because some of the parts are not always the easiest to figure out what to do. Um, also, it can give you... Little clues as to where you might be able to magnetise by looking at beforehand. And as always, I recommend magnetising models. Magnets cost absolutely peanuts on eBay and can save you loads of time and future-proof you from issues that come out when they change the codexes and make different weapons good and not. So we've got bases. Orcs are now, it would seem, on 32 more bases by the looks of these. Interestingly, because as we'll get to, these are push fit or certainly single pose models, you'll notice the bases, if we can have a quick look there, have little holes in for you to fix the models to. So certainly aimed at the more novice gamer, I would say. Look at those, I can't see any bigger bases, so I'd expect to see some more down the box of it. Let's grab our first sprue out and see what we've got. This looks like a dedicated death dread sprue. And the one underneath, uh, this one here, that looks like the rest of the Death Dread sprue. So the Death Dread is an already available model, and this is the one model in the kit that you could have bought previously, and it's been available, I reckon, for at least 10 years, I'd say. But it's a lovely model, one of my favourite Orc models, actually. I used to play Orcs. Uh, Clueless Nick from uh, Team Clueless Games uh, bought all my Orcs off me. He now has a massive Orc horde. And this was my favourite of my painted models. I always like it when Nick still brings it to the table for me to attempt to kill. Um, Death Dreads have been greatly improved in the new rules, like most Dreadnoughts. Um, they're pretty cheap. They don't cost many points. Maybe between, depending on loadout, between 80 and 120, 140 points. You get something that is super killing in combat, you can give it loads of attacks, but you also give it loads of different weapons. And the sprue comes with lots of different weapon options. You've got rockets, you've got plasma guns, you've got flamers, you've got daca guns. All kinds of lovely stuff to stick on this. I think you get alternate shoulder plates. So if you've got more than one, they don't have to look the same. You get a faceplate, but you can have horns and not. There's about four different available claws on the sprue. You get buzzsaw claws, big stompy jaws. All kinds of lovely stuff, all these different bits you can stick around it. An excellent model and good to see in this box, pretty usable in the new rules. Yeah, really like the Death Dread, well worth it. Next up we have some models that have been kind of available before. Not these exact models, but ones that are very, very similar. So these are Death Copters. So these were originally available, you've got three of them in the Assault on Black Reach. I think it was the 5th edition starter box. Um, and probably the most popular starter box amongst Orcs. You've got an amazing deal for Orcs in there. You've got like 20 to 30 boys, Death Copters, um, all kinds of lovely stuff, a nice war boss. Um, and they've been collected and converted over years, and most all players will have found some on eBay. But these are a new refreshing of the kit. Um, it actually gives you options. All the original ones only came with the rockets, which most of them are armed with, and they've got much better in the new rules, so well worth having the rockets on there. But you can now change one in three of your um, death copters to have the plasma gun and a big bomb, which is this bomb down here, which is indeed quite large. Interestingly, looking at the kit, because they're all push fit, you can see you've got the whole side of a death copter there. If this was a multi-part kit, um, you would think all the um, struts and stuff would all be separate, but they're all um, already kind of like posed on there. And as you can see, 
it has the plasma gun already built into the front of the model. That's not interchangeable. You don't get a spare rocket launcher. The data sheet, I believe, says that you can swap. So they, they originally come with rocket launchers and you can swap to this. And that's actually bad and good on Games Workshop's behalf. It's bad because I'd like to be able to swap my model here. But at least they made the data sheet so it will cover people who have the old models which didn't have the option of the plasma gun on the front. Um, it will screw people over if they've modified their old models to have all the different weapons they used to be able to have. Um, but these ones appear to build two rocket launchers and one plasma gun with bomb. I mean, they're not actually plasma guns, they're called a orky blaster or something like that. Um, they've got quite heavily modelled bases, which again, some people like because it looks really cool if it fits in your basing scheme. But some people who don't have that kind of basing scheme really dislike them. I dislike rocks on my bases. I like all my bases to look the same, but that's because I'm a bit angry in that regard. So that is another thing to consider. All these bases all have model bases. I'm trying to see. Yes, and I don't think you can swap them out because one good thing, they don't have any horrible plastic rods to stand on. But if you notice on here, this bit of tree is attached to this defcopter. So I suspect that bit of tree will go to this bit of tree stump here so they are really modeled onto the base so the base grows up into the model so you really do need to use those bases or come up with a different system for mounting you can see this one is mounted on a sign post i'm not sure what this one's mounted on we we'll probably need to look at the other side of the sprue yes you can see it's mounted on a bit of pipe well it looks cool if you like the bases if you don't like the bases that's going to be a pain in the ass to modify so they go down there. Next up, we come to the most controversial part of this box. So this box is the outing for the New Orc boys. So I'm not talking about Beast Snagger boys, which are a new unit type. This is a New Orc boy sprue. The Orc boy sprue has been around for maybe 10, 15 years and is a little bit aged. The Orcs are a little bit small now, um, but it does come with options and such. And that is the issue with these. These are all single pose models. I think there might be a tiny bit of variability in that you might be able to swap out the knobs weapons um, and possibly, yeah. So you can choose a heavy weapon. So you can either have the um, bigger DACA gun, I can't remember, a big shooter or a rocket launcher. And the knob, I suspect, can have a big chopper or a power claw. I'm trying to find him. So there's a knob hand. You can have a big chopper or a power claw. But I think they're the only options available on the sprue. And that would be fine if all the boys on here were armed with slugger chopper or they were all armed with shooter. See the orky coming at me there. But they're not. I believe the squad comes down to a knob, a heavy weapon, five shooter boys, and then or maybe three shooter boys, and then five slugger chopper boys. That's not favourite. You don't want mixed squads. You either want a big squad of shooter boys, and they'll sit in a vehicle generally, and they'll all shoot out of the open top vehicle and stay at range a bit more, or you want slugger chopper and get in there and use your new improved choppers to cleave up some space marines. That's not so clever. You no doubt could modify these. I mean, they are... Reasonably, you can see they are arms and stuff to stick on. It's not like it's one moulded piece. So you will be able to chop like here, for instance, this is a shooter. You could chop that shooter off and put a slugger in place from the old kit. But they do appear to have had a size increase like most models are doing. Games Workshop either do the primaris thing and just say, yeah, we're making bigger versions. Or they just release a new kit and it's 20% bigger, which I think is what's happened here. These certainly look bigger than the old Orcs. Uh, the old Orc boys were very squat. They were kind of like curled up a little bit when you built them. But even things like some of the weapons and stuff certainly look bigger. Like this, this slugger here is certainly standing out as being pretty damn junky. Um, so mixing with the old kit, I'm sure you could do it. But it is a bit of a pain. And it's a, I don't know why they've done it. It just seems a bit strange. And this box comes with two of these sprues. And again, multi-pose, one box, you're getting two units of 10 in there. They're going to look more or less exactly the same. Uh, you can change the knob and the heavy weapon. But that's, that's a little disappointing if you're spending the time and money to make a kit. And it looks like you're getting 10 boys on one, one double sprue here. So they really packed that in, which is probably why they haven't made it a multi proper multi-part options kit. Um, I've, I would have much preferred it if they'd have just done it all slugger or all chopper um, or all shooter. Bit disappointing, but your mileage may vary on that. And if you're an orc, 
you're used to cutting up your models and sorting stuff out so you'll be able to modify it but a pain next up we have the reason that most people will be buying this kit i suspect is another brand new model this is war boss in mega armor and this guy is huge first time i've seen it in person just opening this box here look at the size of that heavy chopper there um it's a super chopper or something but that is nearly the length of my finger there that is absolutely huge that's kind of like Rebute Gulliman height size for a chopper he is himself massive look at the size of this orc there the sprue is a little sparse to be honest there's a lot of space on this sprue for a modern sprue um, so perhaps they could have given him some options because uh, one thing that strikes me about this looking at the data sheet before I did this video is that he doesn't have the option to take a power claw which is really strange for a war boss, certainly a mega armor war boss. Uh, people always used to use kind of like modified Gazgal models or stuff like that, and they nearly all have power claws. So people who had intended to use those as this new model, a bit disappointing because you can't take it on the data sheet. Um, you could obviously model rep it because this is very similar to a power claw, and it's probably the better option. So if you were wanting to have this or a power claw, you would probably choose one of these. Um, but yeah, that's a slight disappointment in the model. But other than that, it's a really cool model. It comes with a decent gun. It's got a heavy shooter on there, and it's got a little grot standing on top of him to fire it. Really nice, characterful model. Uh, really nice. Uh, my mate Nick is going to be grabbing this one off the Kaiser, and hopefully he'll get it painted up, and I can then try and kill it. Lastly, in the box, we have the bases. We've got bases for the um, Death Copters there. Uh, we've got the bases for Blimey, is that? Oh, that's the Death Dread. And that's the War Boss. The War Boss is on a huge base. He, that looks like that's a 60 mil, so he looks like he's on a 50 mil base, really big. And then you get a transfer sheet. Uh, let's get a bit closer up with this transfer sheet. Loads of stuff on there, covers lots of the clan. Some of them are really tiny. I suppose the little plates on the boys for trying to stick stuff are pretty small, but look at the size of these tiny little bad moon symbols. I'm not really sure what the point in having a transfer that tiny is, because you're not really going to be able to see that on the model. Who knows? Is the box good value? Um, if you need the units, yes, I'd say it is. The boys are the only disappointing part, really. The war boss is great. He's actually pretty good in game as well. If you're taking a foot war boss, this is the guy to take. The new Squig War Boss overshadows him quite a lot, but he overshadows most things because he's utterly bonkers in game. Um, but this guy, if you wanted somebody to ride around in a truck, you wanted somebody to um, jog across the board with some boys, he's really good. He's much tougher than a normal War Boss, getting a two-up save and an extra wound. His huge chopper is a really good weapon. Excellent character to take. Well worth it and a brilliant model. Uh, the boys, you always need boys. Um, the mixed weapons is an issue. Um, but that's for you to overcome, I'm afraid. That's just you'll have to decide if you go with mixed squad. It's not the end of the world having three shooters in a slugger chopper squad. I mean, you could happily just say they had slugger choppers or say they all had shooters. Um, nobody's really going to mind unless you're at a tournament and you're kind of like playing against a really anal player. Um, so boys can get round. Def copters, really good in the new rules. Uh, one of the reasons for that is they've become vehicles. And that means they've got the excellent ramshackle rule, which reduces all damage by one against them unless it's high strength shooting. So it makes them really survivable against weapons that are designed to kill them. Things like auto cannons, plasma guns, things like that, that are normally pretty good at taking these out with two damage shooting, um, go down to one. So make them extra survivable. Their guns are pretty good. They're actually quite good in close combat with their... They, Close combat weapons are now their rotor blades, which get loads of attacks. And then a Death Dread, cool model and good unit in game as well. So it is a really good starting point for an Orc Force. Just figure out what you're going to do with the boys. Okay, that is all of that packed up. Thanks for watching all. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Okay, get all accent ready. Pretend to be Danny Dunn. Right, you zogging gits! Let's see what that Kaiser, or that Mrs. Kaiser, more accurately, has sent us.